Welcome to TD Garden, everybody. My name is Mike Petralia, joined as always by Bruins expert writer for WEEI.com, DJ Bean. DJ, things couldn't have gone really any better for the Bruins in game number five, a pivotal game, really, in this series, as they all are when a series is tied 2 2. The Bruins come out and really, I thought, exerted their will, a term that a lot of the Bruins used early in this series, something they thought they really needed to do, and they did that thanks to the power play and getting on the board early in this game. Yeah, I mean, they carried the play. I mean, in some games, especially early on in the series, I mean, you look at game one where they were getting a lot of chances, just not finding ways past Carey Price. Canadians found ways to kind of carry the play. Uh, tonight, a lot of penalties, a lot more. For whatever reason, the Garden has turned to the place where all the penalties are called, not the <laughs> Bell Center for whatever reason. Uh, you finally get the power play going. You take away the chances, generally, from Montreal. I mean, Dayarnay had that chance. Pacioretty had that partial break. They got some chances, and they obviously got a couple goals, but Tukaras doesn't allow a 5-on-5 goal. He hasn't done it since, I think, Dale Weiss, Game 3. Uh, so things are trending in the right direction for the Bruins, while things are trending in the wrong direction for the Canadians with 60 minutes left to figure it out. I said during the game, I tweeted that uh, Tuka Rask has been big at big moments, in the, especially tonight in the game, when he had to be. He hasn't made a lot of huge saves, but when he has had to be big, he has been that in net. And I know you're writing about this on WEEI.com, that I think the Canadians might start to question themselves and just how many chances, good chances, good looks they're going to get at Rask. Well, I mean, that's what's, when the Bruins are at their best, you don't notice how what a good goaltender Tuka Rask is. Like, right. like everyone, like, to watch a Bruins game, you look at the end results and you will say, yeah, the guy allowed one or two goals, maybe he had a shutout, uh, didn't make too many sensational saves. That's exactly what the Bruins want. They want to be a tough team to play against, a team that takes away your chances, and any chances you do get, they happen to have one of the best two or three goaltenders in the world behind them. So that's the issue that the Canadians face right now. Early on in the se er earlier on in the series, through the first seven periods of the series, it's how do the Bruins get past Carey Price? They're getting chance after chance after chance, but they, they got the three goals in, in game one, stymied really throughout game two until they came back in the third there. They were getting chances, just weren't burying them. You saw missed nets, you saw a lot of hit posts, not capitalizing. Canadians right now are trying to figure out how to beat Tuka Rask, but it's not as simple, we just gotta put the puck in that empty net when we have the option. We gotta hit less posts, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. You gotta create against the guy first. I mean, people, for, for all the talk about David Krejci's line early on in the series, you don't just get on the ice and you have scoring chances. They were working for those chances and they were getting them. The Canadians aren't getting those chances, and once they do, then they have to worry about two. One area that the Bruins may have been questioning themselves, and rightfully so, is when in the world were they going to finally score a power play goal against the Canadians in the playoffs? They were, uh, we did the calculation during the game, 0 for their last 37 against the, Bru against the Canadians in the man advantage uh, in the playoffs dating back to game number two, I believe it was, in the 2009 uh, series against Montreal. Michael Ryder scored a, game, a goal late in the second period of that game, uh, but they have really struggled. 0 for 20 in 2011, obviously, they won the Stanley Cup that year. They were 0 for 10 before finally breaking through tonight. Two power play goals. Uh, we saw Riley Smith get a good uh, break in front, a redirect, and that uh, goal uh, really got the Bruins started. Uh, got him uh, actually up to a 2 nothing lead, and then Tory Krug with a beautiful pass of uh, finding Jerome Aginla all alone on the left side. Yeah, I mean, that first power play in the second period, the one on which uh, Krug redirected, I'm sorry, Smith redirected the, uh, the Dougie Hamilton shot, that was a sensational power play, and maybe it's because it was on a penalty taken late in the first period. You come out, get a fresh seat, sheet of ice, and then you can kind of do what you want. That was a really good power play. The type that you thought as the seconds were winding down in it, if they don't score on this power play and they go 0 for 3, 0 for 4, 0 for 5 tonight or whatever, when they feed you the line of, we thought we got some really good looks, you actually have to buy it and say that, yes, they, they did look good, kind of like they did in game one where they had a really good power play, I want to say, in the second period. They just didn't manage to score. Tonight, that second period early on, very good power play. Uh, 22 seconds later, I believe, the the one on which uh, Aginla scored. Some sort of defensive breakdown happens there for Montreal where they've got seemingly everyone in the corner. Krug's able to send that pass out. And I know that the, the biggest issue there for the Canadians is the defensive coverage, but 
if I'm Brian Johnson in front of the net as that pass is coming by me, it wasn't like uh, Tory Krug rifled it over to it Jerome McGinley. It can't get through. you got to get a stick on it. So a bit of a gap, mis misstep, failed opportunity, whatever you want to call it, on the uh, on the part of Jonta and you got Jerome McGinley wide open on the doorstep there. We saw him miss on a similar uh, chance in game one. Doesn't miss this time. So yes, generating some things in the power play, uh, but again, if you're the Bruins as you go to Montreal, do you want to see another game like this where they're calling that many penalties, or do you want to try to play the entire game 5-on-5? Five five? If Claude Julien has his druthers, there is no special teams happening at any time ever, and the Bruins will take that. And as you, they go back to Montreal, you wonder if that will happen again. They, what, nine power plays they gave the Canadians in the first two games, two in the second two games once it moved to Montreal, I think by the second period they'd already given them four tonight, so uh, for whatever reason, it's the garden where Montreal gets all the calls and they get all those power points. All right, something else that's definitely going to be talked about heading into Game 6 uh, Monday night in Montreal is what happened in the final minute uh, of Game number 5 here tonight at TD Garden. It was uh, P.K. Subban in the final minute of the play in neutral zone, skating around, and the video pretty much uh, clearly shows somebody squirted him um, and uh, upon further review it happened to be Sean Thornton it was PK Subban and Sean Thornton having some words Thornton got a big kick out of it he was laughing the uh, TV replays definitely showed that and Subban said after the game he was a little upset by it how will this play out how will that dynamic play out is this just something that'll be glossed over or is it going to grow and grow and grow in the next 48 hours not to be a media member who uh, like rolls his eyes at the media, but you can imagine that this will get talked about a lot. I personally, no matter who it would happen to, it's a pretty low character thing to do, and if Sean Thornton did it, then shame on him, slap on the wrist or whatever. I care absurdly little. It, I, I, yeah, it's a frustrating, dumb thing of him to do. Uh, Nathan Horton did the thing in 2011 where he squirted the fan. It's a stupid, dumb thing to do. Don't do it. But, I mean, Subban puts it out there. And I'm the biggest P.K. Subban fan in the world. He puts it out there that that somebody did big. it. And that it, it shouldn't be a big deal. But just a, but this is exactly what happened. And I know that if I did it, it would be a story for three days. And basically gave the Montreal media free reign. I love a lot of those guys in the Montreal media. But it gives them free reign to get carried away with this. And that's something that happens in the postseason, I guess, from different media, different media. Uh, I just wish that everyone could be as chill as the Boston media, I guess. No one is more chill than DJ. Look at us, just growing out here, <laughs> just relaxed, no water squirting, no questions asked. One thing, uh, Johnny Boychuk, I will leave the uh, viewers with this, uh, DJ, and that is uh, Boychuk said after game number five that he thinks game number six is a must win and he says that it's I a think dumb thing to say it is a dumb thing to say perhaps and it's obviously not factually <laughs> accurate but the thing that obviously he is referencing is 2011 when the Bruins went up in a very similar situation had a chance to close out uh, game number six and lost two to one and then escaped with that miraculous 4-3 win uh, in overtime in game number seven. The Bruins obviously want to avoid that. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've yet to play my first NHL game, so I can't speak about this with too much perspective, but the whole idea of must win, like when you're in a game, when you're in an elimination game, yes, obviously you must win it. You have to give your best effort, and nine times out of ten, you're going to give your best effort. Teams, with the exception of what, the 2011 Flyers usually don't come out in an elimination game and are like, you know what? We're it's done. all you, right? Yeah. You you just take this. It seems like you got some something in mind. Go uh, go run with it. I think that each playoff game, every player takes immensely seriously. Whether it's game one of a series, game two, game three, game four, five, six, seven. I think that the Bruins have the wherewithal and have the experience to know that it's a very bad idea to leave something for a seventh game. In that sense, yes, it's a must win. But no, factually, it is indeed not a must win. We will see what happens. DJ Bean and myself will be up at Bell Center in Montreal on Monday night. Follow all of the coverage on WEEI.com. Once again, in game number five, the Bruins take it by a score of 4-2. to two. They lead the best of seven series in the second round, three games to two. He is DJ Bean. I'm Mike Petralia at TD Garden, WEEI.com.